you're pregnant. It would be weird if I didn't. You behave as if you don't. I researched night last night, and a woman in your condition requires a minimum of eight hours of sleep a night. Why don't you read these books? Nancy, if you are restless enough to keep me who is outside you awake, what about the baby who is inside you? So it's about the baby then? Good. What do you mean? You don't get it, do you? It wasn't you who nearly lost your life in the fire. Or so you think, oh, she's alive. Good, we could have babies. Nancy, Nancy. It's been a long time since that pharmacy burnt down. The world has moved on. <laughs> it's even been a long time since you made up with Cheryl. Yeah, and it's been a long time since you ever thought of anyone else but yourself. Breakfast in bed for my one and only babe. Do you have to announce that I'm your one and only babe? Or am I just lucky and you're finding it important that I should know it? I will ignore that and announce that you're having sausages, well done eggs, toasted bread, again for my one and only. Hmm, you're a star Caris. for sure something has come over you. You came into my life, babe. Come here. Please stay like this. There's no turning back. This is the new me. Oh. I, uh, I'm sorry to ask, but uh, can I borrow 2,000, Bob? I forgot I needed to pick up my suit from the cleaners. And well, as for these shoes, I can't go to the ceremony in these. <laughs> okay, but I'm just lending you. Of course. The only problem with you is that you forget to write down these debts. Well, I'll see you later, okay? Okay. Enjoy your breakfast. We have sacrificed everything we have to see to it that you go to the best of schools. Now you have an opportunity that most young people your age can only dream about. And you go and play around with it. I'm not going to university and have tried to explain that. You will go and do the courses you've been given unless I am not your mother. Where will a BA take me? I'm a musician. If we had given our parents the stupidity she's giving us, where would we be today? Red, try and listen to your mother's views. Save it, Dad. This conversation is over. T? What is this? Ever since I came to this town, this place never opens at the advertised time. I need to pick up my email. Where are these internet people? The scientists. I told the scientists have the honor of resembling each other. But he's also not a headmaster. So who is he? Fine. I'll make use of this time with a shave. But I'll be back. Oh yes, I'll be back. I need to get myself an office. And very soon. <laughs> you piggy, you're hearing the doctors. Your illness is not as usual as illness. You have to take yourself seriously and stop behaving like a baby. Now, did I decide to get sick? This sickness, you don't get it from a matato or from a cough. You have to take your medicines regularly and take care of yourself. Now, where are the keys? Hmm? Where are they? Jam rate. Hmm? Hey. What is this? You see what I'm talking about? You have to take your medicine. Okay, wake up. You go and see that nice handsome doctor at the hospital and you know what to do. Get up. I'm going to carry this. Look here, boy. Don't think what you study in school is the only medicine there is. There is superior medicine. The medicine of salvation. The medicine of spirituality. Mister. Bishop Washington. Bishop Washington. 
We appreciate your insight on different healing potentials that we have come across. But I have to ask you to leave. Hmm? You are distressing my patients. Nancy, to come in. Man shall not live on the tablets of human prescription alone, but the tablets upon which the ten heavenly rules were scripted. How many weeks are you now, Nancy? <sighs> Thirty weeks. So, well into your third trimester, you'd be wanting a second course of the recommended at malaria drugs. That's right, Dr. Terry. I don't want my baby to get ill. I am a pharmacist, and I know that as a pregnant woman, my immunity to malaria is low, that there's a chance that my unborn child may get malaria and die, and that malaria tests don't always work for pregnant women. I'm surprised more women don't do it. I know, I know. A simple cause of SP drugs at 18 weeks, and a second one at about 30 weeks, and you can rest easy. Your baby will be safe. But even with that peace of mind, I get the feeling you're not sleeping easy. Am I right? I still keep on getting the same nightmares about the pharmacy burning down. I keep thinking that I'm trapped inside and the flames keep getting higher and I can't breathe. That was seven months ago and somebody came to your help, didn't they? Good old Speedy, my hero. Nancy, I've always found out that confronting fear is the best way to move on. There's nothing as painful or crippling as fear itself. You're now a mother and you have a life inside you. Or do you want your baby to have a fear for mother? Yes? Sorry, doctor. Peggy Mboga is here and she doesn't look well. What mafia, man? The guy was too fat from eating a lot of pork. That's why people feared him. He was nothing, man. I tell you, man, Snake was dangerous. He had earrings everywhere. Me, I think even his intestines were pierced. W what are you doing? Designing the beard. I, I want to put an O. My friend. Do you call me an Nazareth school model for you to practice your shapes on? Oh, it's the in thing, man. Most superstars have O's. Mister, are you present with your ears? Huh? Bill, the customer says leave the beard. Like in the only poor. So you're the one who told me to advise customers on what is good for them. Leave the customer's beard. So what does this pierced snake have to do with the building I want to rent? They say that he burnt down the pharmacy to revenge on Nancy for breaking down his Chang'a place with the market women. Bill Mon, why lie? Uh, Snake was in prison when the pharmacy was being burned down. He escaped, I swear. Anyway, me, I don't want to talk about him because walls have ears. I'll solo them when I want. That's not how you're going to keep yourself alive. You have to take responsibility for your health. If not for you, then for your baby. I said I'll take the medicine. I don't feel like I can take anything right now. With the ARVs, there's no room for negotiations. You have to take them at the indicated times. Just like you have to eat well, as we have shown you. And most important, you must remember that your friends and family still love you. And you have to believe that you get well. Don't have much choice. Doctor. Give your baby a chance. It's already good she was born negative, but she wants you to leave for her. Okay, I'll take the medicine. Good, I'll go get the nurse. I'll do it myself. No, no, no. You're here so that you can keep an eye on you. I'd rather you are supervised. <laughs> Mama! <laughs> Maziwa! Ma speed! Eh? Ape Inji! Kwani! This your cows! Eh? They are half-cast buffaloes or what? Why do you take such a long time milking them? Eh? Ah! Mm. Walk there! Hey! Mijinga! Mm. Kariz! Mom! I want you to appear today at the health center opening as master of ceremonies. Master of ceremonies? Yes. This is your only chance to show your father that you have really changed your ways and become more responsible and respectable. Well, yes, that might be so, ma'am. But look at these shoes. How could I possibly be master of ceremony in these? Dr. 
Don't tell your father. You pay me back when you get back on your feet, right? Right. Oh, my beautiful boy. Now run along. Mr. Matano, this is not what I expected when I applied for this job. This village is out of this world. You know, I've only been here for two weeks and people are taking me for granted. I'm running with the bishop and I'm making more home visits than I should be. And there's hardly any more entertainment in this town. Mm. And the only place you can eat is here and you have a breathing down on you. Mm. Can't go on like this. Mm. Good. It's always good to open up. Anything else you think I should know? Mambo, can't you recommend some nightlife for my friend here? You look like a hot chick who likes dancing. Perhaps I better go to the health center and check on the final preparation for the opening ceremony. <laughs> Don't you ever. Don't you think it's a lovely weather today, Mama Bobby? How long has he been here? If you came on time, you wouldn't have to ask me such questions. Now, what did you want me to do? Leave my sick daughter at home and come and open these stupid machines? I had to take her to hospital. And you, mister, are you our customer? I suspect I'm part of the furniture. <laughs> Very funny. Since I came here, you have been sitting here taking one glass of juice. Yeah? You're not even using our machines. Now you tell me, if every customer behaves like you, what kind of place would we have? Mama Mboka, please. Sir, I'm sorry. No, no need to be sorry. She's making perfect business sense. It is always important to excite the customer to keep consuming. I will have another glass of juice. You will have the juice, but remember this is not your office. Sir. No, of course it's not. Speaking of which, I've been informed that your wife used to run the pharmacy that burnt down. Yeah. It's sad. Investigations failed to establish exactly what happened. Oh, that's terrible. So is she planning to reopen there? Because I'm looking for somewhere to set up my office. If you want to take over the pharmacy space, just go right ahead and ask Mr. Mabuki. Ah, but are you going to give away the pharmacy without talking to her first? Mama Mboga. Oh, is that because she's a woman? Ah, oh, but things are not done like that. I think it's only fair for her to know what you're up to. <laughs> She's like the, one of those rare women in science fiction movies. <laughs> So, are you coming, yes or no? I want to, but I can't. What's more important than being with me? Red, I'm always with you. Don't even shout at me. I already had a row with my mom, and I'm not going to have one with anybody else. Look, go to the cafe. I'll meet you there. What's wrong with you? You still fear your parents, and now you don't want your mom to see me? We are grown up. Red, please. I'm not running. Red. You've come to visit your friend, eh? Pippi, I always tell you that when your friends come, they should always come in. Come. Not you, Pippi. You have work to do.
gave me a heart attack. They told me this place was empty. That man in glasses told me I wouldn't be disturbing anyone. He told me that nobody ever comes here because they think it is haunted. Is this whole town trying to drive me crazy? Who are you? Who are you? This is my shop. Well, you don't take very good care of it. I'm not what? You must admit, it could do with a lick of paint. <laughs> well, hmm, you're right there. It could do with a lick of paint. But you see, I don't love this place anymore. I don't even fear this place anymore. In fact, I don't even want this place anymore. Ananias Hosea Matano. How do you do? And you must be Nancy, that man from the cafe's wife. I think we can do business. Greetings, Mr. and Mrs. Mulani. Are you after the ceremony? Sure. We are running rather late, I'm afraid. You see, we just had brunch with your daughter here. Brunch? Yes, it's American. We do things the American way these days. Oh. She was just telling us about her music dreams. Tell me more about this brunch idea. It's sophisticated. Hmm. You see, instead of having breakfast and lunch, you have one meal, brunch. Oh. Tell me about this nonsense about Redemptor becoming a singer. She has made Makutano proud by being admitted to the university. But I'm shocked that she won't go. She's just being stubborn. But further education is very important. Look at Pippi here and his electronics. Without a degree, you are nobody. My daughter will never be a nobody. In my days, music was no career. Well, my dear, times have changed since your days. Of course, you'll be invited to her first CD launch. Isn't that right, Red? Sure. <laughs> if I had biscuits like this in my house, I would never run out of visitors. Oh, I wish I were in your position. Nobody ever comes to visit me. They're afraid of your husband. I tell you, people with spectacles, you never know what they're hiding behind those big eyes. He's a good man. If you say so. I was beginning to believe he's like the man of Makutano, especially when he started talking about giving away the pharmacy. Uh, it's for the best, Mama Mboga. I don't see myself ever opening the pharmacy again. You know, it was funny going back there today. I thought it would churn up old memories, bring back nightmares, but it didn't. It's just a burnt out shop. But I'll look for somewhere else, somewhere new to build up. But that's after I've had this little one, of course. <laughs> Children are wonderful blessings. Mm. How is your daughter? I saw her earlier at the health center. It's a battle to keep that one alive. Mm. Don't you worry. Dr. Charles will take good care of her. He has nurses that are trained to take care of patients and make sure they follow the doctor's advice. If you say so, which reminds me, dress up we go. Where? To the opening ceremony of the hospital. Everybody's going to be there. Make sure you put on one of those nice dresses. And by the way, women are buying clothes from Sheryl's today like there's going to be a competition. <sighs> Hoping to catch themselves a handsome Dr. Charles for a husband, eh? By the way, you're right. <laughs> well, he is quite handsome. Quite handsome? <laughs> you're joking. If I was young again, I would chase him myself. <laughs> But Cheryl, if this doesn't fit, it will fit. Someone your size just tried it on. You know, I have to look my best for this afternoon ceremony. Have you seen the new doctor? Hey, have I? Hmm. Mm. Don't worry, Mama Boga. Your daughter will be fine. My only worry is this behavior of hers of refusing to take medicine. Yes, it's a worry. We still don't have a trained counselor yet. It's all part of ARV treatment, along with the drugs, good food, and exercise. But I've talked to her, and she's beginning to look up. Just leave her to me and my nurses, as long as she's still checked in here. Thank you so much, Dr. Terry. If she knew what you're going through to keep her alive, she would behave better. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Baraka, welcome. Hey, <laughs> you seem to be very good with names, Dr. Akena. Oh, it's part of my training, to learn the names of the people that I serve. Good. <laughs> good, and remember, Doctor, that Mr. Baraka is going to make a closing speech. Is he? Yes, because on other side, should have been put in the program from the start. Bernadette. Oh, oh please. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> Dr. Charles, are we ready to start? 
He is just waiting for your father, Mr. Mabuki. Well, the people might get impatient. Anyway, I prepared a brief speech to entertain them, you know. Give a little background of the center. Oh, you're the MC? Didn't my mother mention it? This program's full of surprises. said she was here taking her medicine. I think she discharged herself. She said she was feeling better and left. <sighs> Dr. Shouse, Dr. Shouse, Peggy is not there. Her bed is empty. But I know discharge her. I have to look for her in the house. I'm sorry about the ceremony. One, two, good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you. Uh, before you hear from my wiser and better Winston Mabuki, Bishop Washington. Uh, Bishop Washington has requested that we allow him bless the center before it is open. Uh, Bishop. Uh, let us humble ourselves before the presence of the Almighty. Great is his power and providence that though some amongst us in our midst here reject him, the same way was rejected by Judas, which led him to saying that prophets are not accepted. Uh, pro thank you, thank you, Bishop Washington, for those words of uh, spiritual uh, nourishment. Thank you. Amen. And amen to you too. We welcome you all, ladies and gentlemen, to the official opening of the Makutano Health Center, which wouldn't, wouldn't have been, been possible, possible without, without the tireless, tireless efforts of the Makutano Markets Women's, Women's Development Association. <laughs> These women on their own sought funding for setting up and convinced big people to invest here. They are our mothers. And indeed, as our mothers, they have demonstrated their undying love for us by setting up the health center to keep us alive. We thank you very much, our mothers. Ladies and gentlemen, Winston Mabuki. Thank you, sir. Since my son has already broken protocol on my behalf, I will take this opportunity to introduce some very important people. I can see the chief is with us back there. Welcome, my chief. Let's take the front seat. I greet you all. I'm sorry I'm late. I was attending to some very important business at uh, the district headquarters. Thank you. Thank you. And most importantly, our new doctor, Dr. Charles, we welcome you to our town. You'll find us simple and complicated people. Come and welcome me. Dr. Charles, please. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mabuki. Indeed, I must say that in my short stay here at Makutano, I found it nothing less than enlightening. First, let me introduce to you some very important people, my nurses. And Ms. Ananias Osea Matano, whose organization funded the setting up of this center. Ms. Matano, greet the people. And then, of course, we have um, other people. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey.